So, you just finished building your brand new gaming computer. It's your first ever build, you spent a ton of time researching the parts and watching YouTube tutorials on how to build it, and then you spent a good chunk of your weekend actually putting it all together. And now you're wondering, what do I do next? When it comes to setting up your new build, it can be done really well, or it could be done really poorly. It's important that you set it up properly, because if you don't, you could be losing out on performance, experiencing issues like crashes and blue screens, or in the worst case, actively damaging your parts. Now I know, all of that sounds scary, but it is something that could technically happen. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through step by step of how to set up your new gaming build. The first thing that you need to do with your new build is visually inspect it. It may sound dumb, like I just built this thing, but even I have forgotten to plug in cables or install the SSD, and troubleshooting afterward will take way longer than a quick visual pre-inspection. It's simple to do. The main things to look for are, are all the components installed, like two sticks of RAM or four sticks, your SSD, your GPU, hey, even your cooler. Are all the power cables plugged in and seated properly? This is especially critical if you're using an RTX 40 series GPU with the new 12 pin power cables. Make sure that the power connector is fully seated and clicks. With a quick inspection out of the way, we can boot up the computer and head to the BIOS. To get there, you'll need to spam the delete key while your computer is turning on. In the BIOS, the first thing that we wanna check is the CPU temperature. Depending on your CPU, your cooler, and even where you live, this will fluctuate a good bit but we wanna make sure that the temperature is in the 25 to 45 degrees Celsius range. If it's much higher than that, say 70s or 80s, or if it's rapidly increasing, that's a sign that something is wrong. In this situation, shut down your computer immediately. Most likely, it's something to do with your CPU cooler. It could be mounted incorrectly, the fan isn't spinning, or in some cases, you could have forgotten to take off that plastic before you installed it. Next up in the BIOS, check to see that all your RAM shows up. If you bought and installed 16 gigs, but only eight are showing up, that means something's wrong. In this case, turn off your computer and try reseating your RAM. Or in other words, unplug your RAM, then plug it back in. If it still doesn't show up as expected, try plugging the sticks into other slots. So if you originally put them in slots two and four, move those sticks over to slots one and three. Once you've confirmed that your CPU is being cooled properly and all your RAM is showing up, we can head out of the BIOS and begin installing Windows. I'm not gonna go over the whole installation process today since it's pretty straightforward and there are a lot of guides out there on how to do it. However, I did wanna point out one critical thing. Make sure that you install Windows on the right storage device. Say you have both an SSD and hard drive. You wanna make sure that you install Windows onto the SSD for the best performance. Or let's say you have a smaller, faster PCIe SSD and a larger, slower SATA SSD, make sure you install Windows onto the faster PCIe drive. So, you now have Windows installed and you're thinking, I'm good to go, right? Wrong. Your stock Windows installation is missing a lot of critical drivers and features. It's also pretty unoptimized, since it's meant to work okay with any system and not necessarily work great with yours. So before we dive into tuning Windows and giving you essentially free performance, let's talk about the essential things that you need. First up, you need drivers. And to download those drivers, you need internet. Whether you're using Wi-Fi or ethernet, connect to your network and ensure that you can access the internet. Now, I'm specifically pointing this out first because some motherboards don't come with Wi-Fi or Ethernet drivers. So that means you need to download and install Wi-Fi and Ethernet drivers in order to access the internet, but you can't access the internet because you don't have Wi-Fi or Ethernet drivers. It's a confusing situation to be in. If you're one of these unlucky few, you'll sadly need another computer and a USB stick. You can download the motherboard's internet drivers from the manufacturer's website. You can load them onto a USB stick, transfer them over to your new computer, and then finally get them installed. Okay, so now you have internet drivers, but what other drivers do you need? The most important is your GPU driver. Whether you have a Nvidia, AMD, or even Intel graphics card, you're gonna want to install the latest driver for the best stability and performance. These are incredibly easy to install and most of the time you can enable automatic updates so you can set it once and forget about it. 
Next up are the motherboard drivers. This includes a suite of different ones, including LAN and Wi-Fi, audio, USB, and even chipset. Look up your motherboard model, and on the manufacturer's website, you should find a download page with all of the latest drivers. And while we're on the topic of the motherboard, let's talk about the BIOS one more time. Having the latest BIOS version gives you the best performance, compatibility, and platform stability. Well, most of the time. I'm looking at you, Asus. But generally, you want to update your BIOS every once in a while to make sure you're getting the most out of your system. With the BIOS now updated, we have all the low-level things we need. However, in Windows, there's one or two more things that you want to enable in order to maximize the compatibility of your system. Using the search bar, open up Turn Windows Features On or Off. At the top, you'll see something called Net Framework 3.5. This package is to enable compatibility with older software, so you don't have to go hunting down for those drivers later. Also, if you're a software developer or occasionally use IDEs or Bash, I'd recommend scrolling down and enabling Windows Subsystem for Linux. With both of these boxes checked, simply hit OK and let Windows Update install them for you. Okay, now that we have all of our essentials out of the way, let's talk about improving Windows and giving you more performance for free. I'm assuming that you just have a normal version of Windows installed and aren't using a custom stripped down ISO like the ones from Ghost Spectre. Side note, these can be awesome. If you're interested in what Ghost Spectre or custom Windows ISOs are, or if you're interested in the performance uplift they bring, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm gonna be making a full video talking about this topic. So back to free performance. First, Windows is full of crap. There are so many features and services that take up a significant amount of resources, all of which you don't need. Now, you can dive into the services menu and deep into the registry in order to disable these one by one, or you can use a program called Winero Tweaker. This is a free to use tool that allows you to remove telemetry, spyware, and ads from Windows, giving you a better experience, and more importantly, giving you more performance. Now, again, I'll be making another whole video about this program, but the quick rundown is go through the list and anything that you don't need, disable it. There are a lot of options here, so just choose the ones you know or look into the ones you're curious about. So now that Windows is decrapified, your CPU is gonna be a lot happier. But now, let's talk about your GPU's performance. There are two programs here, each of which essentially do the same things, but they also have their own flavors and use cases. These programs are MSI Afterburner and EVGA Precision X1. I'm gonna be talking about the former. MSI Afterburner is an incredible tool that allows you to tweak your GPU clock speeds, voltages, power limits, and more. What we're here for is the power limit. When you're playing a game, your GPU will go as hard as it can, up until the 100% power limit. However, if you raise this limit up to 105, 110, or even 120% of the maximum, that'll allow your GPU to boost higher and for longer, giving you more FPS. Another GPU power tweak you can do is in NVIDIA's control panel. Right-click your desktop and open up NVIDIA control panel. In the Manage 3D Settings tab, scroll down until you see Power Management Mode. Most of the time, this will be set to something like Normal or Adaptive. Simply change this option to prefer maximum performance, hit apply, and boom, you just got a couple more frames. While we're still in NVIDIA's control panel, go to the change resolution tab and make sure you're running at your monitor's maximum resolution as well as refresh rate. Refresh rate is the big one here because a lot of the time it defaults to 60 Hertz. So if you're rocking a 120 or 240 Hertz monitor, you're leaving a lot on the table. With all of these tweaks applied, you just unlocked a good chunk more performance out of your computer. So the question becomes, what else is there to do? Play games. Well, a better way to put it is test your system. You just built your computer, so not only do you have a warranty, but you're also, hopefully, still in the return window. If you have a problematic component or something just isn't working as it should, you want to find out now and get a free replacement rather than weeks or months from now when you're stuck with what you got. Of course, playing games is one way to test your computer. It's a realistic scenario that utilizes a good amount of resources, but most games don't stress your components enough to check those edge cases. So for that, we're gonna be using benchmarking and stress testing tools. First up is benchmarking, to make sure that you're getting the expected performance out of your parts. 
The main ways to do this are Cinebench for the CPU, Unigen Superposition for the GPU, and 3D Mark or even Pass Mark Performance Test for benchmarking your whole computer. When you get the results, compare them online. If you're close to what other people are getting, you're in the clear. But if you're 15, 20% or more off, something's wrong, so you need to investigate. So now that we know we're getting what we paid for, let's stress test the system to test those edge cases. Just like with benchmarking, there are a ton of ways to do this, but the primary ones that I use are Prime95 for the CPU and Furmark for the GPU. These softwares push your parts as hard as they possibly can, so you can see your temps and confirm your computer is stable, even in the harshest conditions. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. You got a brand new computer, and now it's set up and working incredibly. I hope. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this high-level walkthrough of how to set up your new gaming computer. Leave a comment down below if you have any tips or special softwares for first-time builders to use, because this video was just the tip of the iceberg. So, as always, thanks for watching. I'm Spectral Tech, and I'll see you next time.